Welcome to The Lair, a place where interesting people you may know tell you things you didn't. So grab a chair and your favorite vice and get comfortable. There are no rules in The Lair, but there is Laura Babcock. You know her from TV, and she is not into media monogamy. Let's find out who else is in The Lair. So we're here in The Lair, and you have the distinction, sir, of being the only guest who is here by request. Lauren Lieberman came up to me and he said, Laura, so I'm in council chambers the other day. And Terry Whitehead says, hey, Lauren, get me on that layer cast. And, and Lauren's like, are. what do I look? Well, you do it. I <laughs> shout back across council chambers. Do I look like Babcock to you? Thank God, no. Please. He did that. He Please. actually did that. <laughs> He's not kidding. And he did it just loud enough to, so everyone can hear Mission like accomplished. Bob, <laughs> <laughs> so he said to me after, he goes, Terry wants to be in the lair. And so I'm like, you know what? Um, this was never set up as an interview forum for council, but we have had Lloyd in, we've had Jay in, Sam came in, uh, possibly not to his benefit, uh, just before, <laughs> just <laughs> saying, just before the censure. Maybe, uh, maybe possibly. Um, so why did you want to be here? Well, I think that um, as a councillor, you want to have as much access uh, to the community as possible. And uh, there's so many issues to talk about, and I'm one of those that are not afraid to talk about them. And uh, you provide a great uh, medium uh, to access people that I may not have access to otherwise. And I thought, uh, good turn uh, uh, with uh, Lauren. We, we had a little bit of a raz at council, and I looked at Lauren, and I said, you know, Lauren, I'm going to give you your opportunity, and I thought the perfect place for him was right here at the uh, ah, Lair Cast. So tell me about this little grudge match that we're watching play out. Did you hear that, everybody? There's a, there's a grudge match going on. What happened, if, if, if I may, Go and, and when... Hold when on, I, just before you do, Jasper, please, say that line again. It's perfect for this moment. Well, seriously, you, you do have to, if you can't get along, you got to get it on. So get it on, <laughs> gentlemen, and just... Please, get it on, get along. I don't want to see you get it on for any money no, in the world. No, that would be with gloves on, oh, get okay. it on. Either, not, either not way. Other either way, I don't want to see it. Okay, so tell us what happened. I'm at council many months ago, not that many months ago, making a delegation. Mm -hmm. Councillor Whitehead was not present at the beginning. I don't realize he's not present at the beginning. This is why it's all cleared up now. Oh, okay, and you guys I are friends again. No, no, okay. and I begin the presentation with, I am not here as that asshole from TV. Right. I'm just here from the is festival. Is he the only person who's ever self-identified as an asshole in council chambers? Do self they? I love him for it. Yeah, but uh, has anyone ever ever said that in any delegation never, before? Never. I am an asshole. Let's just get that on the record. I'm not the one from TV. I'm not the right, asshole that's, from TV. No, and there was a whole shtick that there was a slideshow of, of um, um, that guy, and it was a picture of me on TV with you, and I'm like, that's not me. He has my name, and there was this whole production on right. our PowerPoint, and... Which is kind of goofy, don't you think? No, but it's important because it gets it out of the way. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. No, but, and, and the levity it's of it all fromage, is fine. You know? all right. Absolutely, but yeah. come okay. on. But you're fromage, all right. And, and council could use a, a laugh for sure, yeah, especially for sure. on uh, uh, the delegations of uh, boards and agencies. So I make my presentation. <laughs> Terry then comes in. Yeah has not seen how I've cleared the air on I'm not that TV asshole. You really weren't there from the beginning? No, you, no. See, and this, this is- puts a whole new spin on the fight. I know, this is- All right, all right, okay. So, so Terry then asked the question, you know, really? Really, you're gonna stand in front? You're, you're that asshole from TV. Like everything I just cleared the air on. And I'm like, what the fuck? And Terry, so what we went exactly at it. did you say? I actually wasn't quite that way. No, I didn't I, think I, so. Know, I was trying to- It was close. I was trying to do a Liberalism. Yeah, <laughs> Don't it, try to do a Libra. No, it's, it's tough, but I've watched him on the O Show and uh, some of the other programs, and I understand his sense of humor, so I thought I'd try and pull it off, and I said, Don't you feel a little sheepish being here today? Ah. And, uh, and I think that's where things which, go. Which would have been funny had I not already, like, right. we cleared that at the beginning. So, so you thought, what is this guy doing? Doesn't he get it? Right. He said that I'm not that asshole from TV. Right. So, so he calls you sheepish, and you go apeshit. Yes. Lot, that's a good animal reference, right? I think a good yes. metaphor with animals. Apes should yes. shoot. Yes, like but it. it's fine now. Let's see if we can keep the animal theme well, going. Well, it, it, it's it fits because Lauren did shear himself for his latest. He did that shear is true. Yeah. He did. <laughs> now, anyone in the anyone in the peanut gallery? Any peanut gallerians who can extend the metaphor of another animal reference? Yeah, yeah, pulling I can, wool over the eyes. Rob, I can make you a sweater. It's still in the garbage yeah, can no, if you gross. want. You called yourself. That's a that's your opening line to anything you want. Well, oh, 
What did you call yourself? A silverback ape or a silverback gorilla? What did you however, say? However, I did uh, indicate <laughs> to uh, Lauren that uh, I was tongue in cheek. Ah. And, uh, but I felt pretty bad about how it was taken. And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, one turn deserves another, and here I am. Because Lauren got upset, and the paper. I have really thin skin. You do. You're, you're a total. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> I almost said the word. Yeah. Starts with a P, ends with a Y, and Deirdre would yell at me for using it. <laughs> You're a total pussy. <laughs> you get upset about everything. You do. Why would Deirdre be mad about pussy? Because she gets mad She like... loves pussy. Oh. <laughs> Is this the thing on? Day... All right. No, she Talk loves, to the counselor. She loves Renee. Has some up. respect. But the All other right. day when I said... <laughs> The other day when she was here in the lyric, <laughs> uh, we do we do have an elected official in the third chair. So uh, let's. Yeah, he's uh, loving yeah. it. The I other prefer time. to talk about kittens. Yeah. How was that? He used to be he used to I be a you. rock and roll promoter, didn't you, Terry? He used to be a rock and roll promoter. Didn't yeah, you? I used to be in the rock and roll business. Yes, so I had. A, so he can't be offended by these these you know, I, uh, jokes we're making. I had a, a production company called Rock Till You Drop Concert Productions. Rock Till You Drop rock Concert till you Productions. Rock Till You Drop Concert Productions. Did you guys know he's a former rock producer? Did you? Yeah, you did. Jasper, well, he's your date. Of course, you knew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how did you go from rock and roll producing up north to the bowels of Hamilton Council? Well, I actually uh, um, was quite involved with many things. Uh, rock and roll was just one of them. Uh, it's just an opportunity. When I was in high school, uh, I started off with uh, buying a, a stereo and having uh, a jam and in an in a auditorium and having dances, and it just went on from, really? from uh, playing music and playing my records, quite frankly, and I was on radio as well. Did you own records? Uh, I played my old records, and then. So uh, were you a singer or? No, what? just uh, I just love music, and yeah. uh, and I love celebrating music, and I love to socialize, and uh, like the layers uh, uh, cast here with uh, your own little group groupies. Yeah, uh, you I, guys are groupies now. I uh, I uh, <laughs> used to on. host these uh, <laughs> host these events, and uh, and the high school uh, kids come out uh, galore, and, and I was making money. Wow. And it was such a great success as well. Let's just move on to bands now. So I moved yeah. on to bands, and uh, and I had a couple uh, really close friends that joined me. And uh, so not to rip off the edge, but what happened? What are you doing here? You're a successful rock producer. What happened was uh, in Mississauga there was an accident, and in, in that accident, uh, a child or I guess a youth uh, it was a motorcycle accident and sued the city of Mississauga, and it was a significant award, huge award. So insurance premiums just went out the uh, the, the yin yang and. Wow. The reality is, is that when, and most of the concerts I was producing at that point were outdoor concerts for like the Massey Fair. So you were uh, kind of like Lauren Lieberman yes, 10 years ago, yes, 20 years ago. Yes, so I understand his pain. That's creepy. You guys, and, are, like, you guys are festival buddies. And, uh, and what, so what happened is with the insurance rates just skyrocketing, I thought, you know, uh, taking a lot more risk with weather uh, conditions and so forth. Yeah. Uh, it was time for me to, uh, to remove myself and look for something else to do. And, you know, I was a former hockey player and I played junior hockey and I really? often talk about my first fight in hockey was with Al Secord and I was at training camp at Sioux Greyhounds so with uh, Wayne Gretzky. Really? I didn't make it. So I thought the next blood sport called politics was the best thing for me. So here hold I am. on a sec. So who's Secord? I don't know. Al hockey. Secord was a second tier Chicago Blackhawk. Really? Um, just at the end of helmet wearing, a defenseman. So tell, goal us the, so tell us about uh, the fight. Like, I want details on the fight. What happened? It was actually in Pee Wee's, and I remember that uh, to make it, you had to stand your ground. And uh, we went out and uh, dropped the gloves, got into it, uh, went into the penalty box, had a few words in the penalty box. Uh, when the penalty was over, we went out. The play was in, uh, in, in, in our end, and uh, I didn't even look at the play. He didn't look at the play. We just went at it again, and uh, we became good friends ever since. Really? Secord wasn't a goon, but he was tough. Yeah. But he wasn't an NHL goon. So, no. so having to stand your ground in Pee Wee Hockey taught you to stand your ground on Hamilton Council. I'm just looking for the leap into politics <laughs> from hockey and rock to I wish, city council. I, I wish it was. I think uh, there's an old saying, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Elliott Lake was a, a mining community. Uh, and, and when my dad, uh, who was from Hamilton, uh, worked at Stony Creek Dairy and met my mom from Glace Bay, Nova Scotia, going to church and uh, had a job opportunity in this new land, this new town called Elliott Lake. It was a mud city then because it had no really? housing. So, uh, of wow. course, my mom was pregnant with twins. I was one of the twins. I didn't know you were a yeah, twin. I'm a twin. And uh, God help, we got another one out there. But anyway. <laughs> that uh, explains a lot. <laughs> but uh, what happened was uh, uh, they lived in Sudbury at an old cottage while, you know, they're building houses in Elliott Lake. And uh, my dad was one of the pioneers, you know, raised uh, money for a new roof and a new arena. Wow. Uh, pioneer and created uh, uh, and, and, and started a lot of the sporting programs in Elliott Lake. Hmm. Uh, in fact, 
I remember when I was 16 and wrote uh, an article and a column about my dad and talked about all the contributions he made to this community and all the things we got to enjoy. And it was some sa uh, sacrifice to the family not seeing him, but having said that, we had such a better community for it. Mm. And I uh, wrote this uh, column and uh, it was entered into, uh, I guess it was the Civic Awards, and uh, my dad ended up getting a Civic Award from the wow. community and they asked me to speak. And I remember my dad was a very, very well-spoken individual. And they had asked me to go up and, and uh, have a few words and introduce my dad. And uh, I did. And I think it was the first time I seen my dad speechless and, wow. uh, and very emotional. So, uh, like they said, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Did your dad have a chance to see you be an elected official? Absolutely. Absolutely. And how, does he, how do you feel uh, still that? with us, yes? He's still with us. Yeah. In fact, he ran for mayor uh, the same time in Elliott Lake, the same time I ran for, uh, for council. And... Uh, I remember going up uh, to uh, Elliott Lake and brought my brothers up and they had the big stage set up outside and the band and the whole bit and and, uh, and I did the introductions and uh, did a little speech to kick off his campaign which was uh, a real honor and a privilege for me as uh, being his son and like I said having apple not far from fall far from the tree so, so I had that opportunity to yeah. uh, introduce his uh, mayoralty campaign. And you have a family and you work long hours on council. Do you take solace in that same experience of your father that he was maybe not around all the time, but he was contributing? Yes, uh, I mean, that's, uh, we were just having a discussion uh, a little earlier about that. Uh, one of the things I need to look at moving forward, because I do have an autistic child and, uh, and, and uh, you always worry about and are concerned about his future and his independence and his ability to, uh, to move on. And, I'm, and I keep asking myself, am I doing the right thing? Uh, do I need to be spending more time uh, uh, nurturing him? But at the same time, uh, you know, if somebody wasn't out there speaking on thing, places like Charlton House, uh, yes, he, may not he, may not, yes. he may not have a place to go to. Right. So uh, I think uh, on the long run, I'm not just doing it for my son or, or my children, I'm doing it for the broader community. And I think there's nothing more self-satisfying than doing that. And that's kind of what you experienced growing up. You use the analogy, the apple doesn't fall far. Right. Your dad was building arenas and changing the community and pioneering. I, I want to challenge that, though. Go nuts. Because that's Terry you're... is... No, no, Terry was best known to me as a, as a backroom guy. For everybody, at some point, of every political stripe, you were Christofferson, Cox, Sheila's how I remember Mayor you Bob, Sheila, Morrow, yeah. um, and, and in those days, Morrow was a, a staunch conservative. Yeah. Um, Sheila being the ultimate liberal, Christofferson being... How are you making this conversation partisan, Lauren? No, no, but like, first, no, like, it's seriously, very... he's talking about his kid and his values. You're no, no, but he's talking about his dad and doing, like, I... Hi. The back room was the Terry Whitehead that was this community, and the transition to politician is bizarre, because those guys who are the special assistants who are the operatives for the politicians often don't make the plunge. It's yeah, that's true. Like Mario and Carmen Rosado and a number of others, right? Well, they're not all that electable, <laughs> but... No, but I'm well, just saying. Well, let me... Let's, uh, I mean, it doesn't start there, though. It starts uh, back at home. So, I mean, I was a, a, a vice president of the Student Council in uh, Elliott Lake. I became the vice president and grievance chairman for the steelworkers. Uh, I was a student rep on the student council... Uh, sorry, on the... Uh, on the town council for recreation. Uh, I was a youth representative. Uh, I was chair of Yakmar that dealt with uh, 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 people with uh, mental health challenges really? uh, when I was a youth. Uh, so, and then, you know, every minor sport program, I was either coaching or, or doing something. So, so I was really leader, involved. Since you were a child. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, that, so I have that background so and experience as well. So when you were rock well. promoting, did your father wince? And say, why is the, all this student council stuff going into rock bands? I'm just wondering. No, he just told me, keep the drums out of the house. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. So now you're in a position, as you said, with an autistic child. Is, is your child an, is it a son? Yes, he's uh, 13 years old now. And is uh, he in IBI, or has he been? He's been through a, an excellent program here at yeah. Shadok, uh, an incredible program, quite frankly. And uh, I have worked with many of the parents in this community. I want to say that... Uh, uh, if I was going to pick a place in Canada mm. to raise a child that has some challenges, I wouldn't place, pick any other place than Hamilton, Ontario. We've got some of the best programs in this country, and we should be proud of them. You brought up, here, here, but you brought up Charlton House, Suzanne, Susan Claremont. I wonder if I keep calling you Suzanne. I don't know. It seems more exotic somehow. Very Susan, similar to Suzanne yeah, Bray. Yeah, I know. Or maybe that's it. Maybe it's Suzanne Bray. Uh, but Susan Claremont, who's here, still here, uh, she was talking about Charlton House, and I tried to zero you out as one of the councillors who didn't support it, but I was incorrect, you did. 
Is it, is it partly for that reason that you think that children who have um, issues need our support and that that was an unfair decision by council, or, or why did you vote the way you did on Charlton House? I think there's a number of issues that we really need to take a serious look at. Uh, in a time uh, with a downturn in the economy, or even if, it, I mean, the money is tight. You see what's happening with the debt at the federal level. You see what's happening with the debt at the provincial level. And you look at the challenges uh, at the city, and we have a static uh, tax base to work with, and that is the property tax base. So when you look at all the excellent services that many of the providers uh, uh, provide here in this community, you need to understand that every time you make it even more difficult in the context, of the, here in the case they're trying to converge operations uh, so they can continue providing a great service. But you're trying, but what we're doing in turn is make it a heck of a lot, hell of a lot more expensive for them to operate. And if you do that to providers, they're not gonna be able to provide the services and who gets robbed? the very people that you're trying to serve in this community. And to me, that is the wrong, uh, wrong headed way and a wrong headed approach to doing things. So how do you feel, Terry, about, because every councillor eventually, if they've been around for a while, gets a persona. Just like Lauren has a persona, I have a persona. Yes, we do. I was called a nice name the other day, which I kind of like. Um, we all get late. Battle axe. Battle axe. You know? Isn't that a good one? Because it's, it means I'm antagonistic and overbearing and domineering, all of which I can be at times. We all have our own shtick. When you've been on council for a while, you start to have a persona. And your persona is the policy wonk. Maybe it's your time in Parliament with Sheila, I don't know. But, you know, if there's an issue that can be dragged out and overspecified and sort of beaten to death, you're kind of the guy behind that, you know. Everybody has their own shtick. That would probably be your, and tell me if you think that's grossly unfair. But it seems to be if there's a, Brad Clark will look at it from the legislative processes. You'll look at it from the policy position of it. Sam will talk about it. You know, everybody's got their own kind of persona. First of all, do you think that's a fair characterization? And secondly, do you think that that's the most effective way to work with council? Well, I think uh, one of the things about democracy is that, uh, I mean, as Churchill said, it's not the best, but it's the, uh, the, the best we have. Mm -hmm. and I'm just paraphrasing, of course. Uh, I, I believe that we have really strong strengths around that, uh, that mm -hmm. chamber. I think that uh, uh, from a social economic, from business environment, mm -hmm. uh, from social services, uh, from Business. I mean, I can't think of. You think Lloyd business. You think Brian I environment. I can't think, think of. An, everybody's got I can't thing. think of a sector, agricultural, whatever. I don't think there's a sector that doesn't have a voice around that table, that and uh, and I have and I'm part of that puzzle. Uh, so when you take a look at the mechanism working called government, you need to ensure that uh, each every component is being represented at the table. And I think that's what you see. So I don't. I'll take any label they want to put on me, but I think that I'm part of that gel that uh, is creating good decision making. And if you take a look, I mean, I brought a newsletter at what's happening in the city of Hamilton. Okay. Uh, it's no secret that uh, Hamilton is uh, outperforming a lot of the communities around us. It's very exciting. Uh, you know, lowest unemployment last number of years, yeah. uh, coming in at less than 1% in taxes in the last two years, uh, uh, triple the job rate in, uh, in Canada in the last year. I mean, when you take a look at the raw numbers and the stats, we're making good decisions, regardless of the circus stuff, Pan Am or whatever. You've got to take a look at the broader picture. And I think that doesn't happen by accident. I think that happens by informed deci uh, decisions being made but, and, and being represented around that horseshoe. And I think right now, I will honestly say this, I love this council. I think this is one of the best councils I had the privilege of working with. I think that, uh, in fact, I can honestly say when I go to work now, I look forward to going to work. Uh, I couldn't say that uh, a term ago. In, uh, in spite of the mayor or including the mayor? <laughs> uh, I would say the, I'm talking council. This is a great council. The mayor we don't see a lot of, quite oh, frankly. Geez. So, uh, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> well, you ask the question, you get the answer. I didn't think he'd bite. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there you go. That's what we're running with on Tuesday. <laughs> um, I asked the question because... Sometimes a common enemy unites, and I don't want to say it's an, an enemy situation, but because of the turmoil of the last few months, I've seen a gelling of council that I haven't seen before. When Lauren and I showed up to watch what we thought was going to be a long historic discussion on the censure, you guys were so in lockstep, it was, it was shocking. Um, so it's almost as though council has decided regardless of the histrionics around Pan Am or Peggy Gate or whatever, we're going to 
settle down and function. And like you said, you've got the you've got the experience at the other level of government of Brad Clark. You've got Pasuda representing agriculture. You know, you've got such I've never thought of it that way, Terry, but when I look around that table, you're right. You represent all the necessary constituencies and you guys have been doing some good stuff. There's no color. That's what's missing. What's that? Hamilton's ethnic community. Oh no, I'm not talking about no, in terms no, but of diversity. In terms of the full slate. I'm just saying I'm just saying in terms of the their representative areas, right? Like you have agriculture, you have business, you have environment. McCaddy, the environment. Yeah, you have, far, so it's a good mix. Service. And Lawrence Common is valid. Uh, you know, some may argue that we don't have enough women either, but yeah. let's separate uh, a couple issues. I'm, what I'm talking about is uh, values. I'm talking about experience, life yeah. experiences yeah. and positions perspectives. That, and you perspectives some, yeah, exactly some, around that table. Good uh, those are, uh, are legitimate arguments, but that's another right. argument altogether. And I'm not so. a fan Fair of enough. quotas, and that might sound terribly inappropriate for a minority as a woman to say, but I just think that, you know, if more women... women aren't minorities, uh, by the way. If women, sure they are. If women in that environment, they are. In politics, they absolutely are. They're totally underrepresented. 51%. No, in the, in the population, in the popula yeah, there's only two of us representing the women in this room. Yeah, but you're it's big personalities, both of you. Yeah, we are. We can handle it, eh? Uh, we're, we're yeah, gonna, I feel we're gonna, we're gonna have 12 to 1 odds. <laughs> anyway, but no, in terms of representation in politics, women are absolutely in the minority. But I'm not for quotas. I think if more women want to get in, they'll get in. If they get elected, good on them, they're there. Um, and well, I've had. Tell you a little secret, yeah, please. I mean, tell me the, the little secret is uh, uh, I have a wonderful wife uh, who emigrated uh, from uh, Poland and, uh, and, 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 Emigrate from Poland when it, it was tough. It, it was no food on the, in, in the grocery stores. Yeah. Uh, escaped through Germany, settled in Italy, wow. uh, and then emigrated to Canada uh, and uh, became a, was a single mom and wow. and survived. Wow. And uh, and I was lucky enough to meet at Hess Village thanks to Jasper, quite frankly. So really, Jasper, you have so uh, oh, good so what? What did Jasper tell you that night? So uh, <laughs> so so get along, get it on. So, <laughs> So, so, so the point to the story, though, the point, the point of the story is that uh, don't think that uh, uh, that there are no, uh, are no influences at home in regards to some of the decision making right. and values yeah. we we sure. spend at council. I mean, I often go to Polish dinners and I joke around and I was mentioning this earlier that you know no one knew in Poland uh, uh, their constitution. The American constitution was drafted uh, on, based on the Polish constitution. Not a lot of people know that. No, I didn't and I also know. talk about the fact that somewhere in, in Lawrence in, certainly did not know. Somewhere, that. yeah, somewhere in, in in Poland, there's an army missing a general because I married her. And uh, and that's the truth. What? Your your wife was a Polish general. No, no. It's just uh, it's, we understand each other and each other's role. And uh, so, and where's the Polish general coming she's from? She's like a general. Oh. She's like a general. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm not that kind of wife. It was a, it was it, it was an it was an analogy. It. it was an analogy. But, I got uh, you, Terry. I I I, I, I love it to death, but. Uh, you know, if we're going wrong, if we're going in the wrong direction on garbage collection, I can tell you something. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing so it. thanks for sharing that secret. Back to the mayor thing. Uh, I'm just no, saying, I, like I appreciate knowing your wife's a hard yeah. ass, but but no. When you said, when I asked you the question, in spite of or, or with the mayor, because I've heard some comments here in this forum that you guys are gelling in spite of what's going on. That's why I asked you the honest question. Um, you say you don't see much of the mayor. What would be the role you're used to the mayor playing because you've been on council for a couple of terms now. Yeah, well, fair enough. And, and I was the chief of staff for a mayor. Um, so I had that experience. I want to say that, uh, I mean, it, it's been a bit of a bumpy road. Uh, I think right now what we're seeing is that the mayor understands that he has a fairly good operative council. Why would you mess with something that isn't broken? And right now this council, as far as I'm concerned, and I might have a bias, but uh, it, I don't think it's broken. Mm -hmm. And I think the mayor is starting to recognize for a number of reasons that uh, that this is not a council to, to mess with when it's working so as well as it is. I have to ask you this question, Terry, because, okay, so the night of the censure, you know what I, where I'm going with this. We trucked down to City Hall, Lauren and I never do, but we thought, you know what, we've been talking about it. The mayor called me with the Peggy Gate thing, so we should, we should be there for the end of it. So we go, we show up, we're sitting there. For whatever reason, you guys decide to do the moves that you made. So we all go out to the bar afterwards, and we're like, wow, that was an interesting, unexpected turn of events. We did not think it would go down like that, but if they're all moving on, that's all good. We'll buy the unanimity of the I don't voice. think that's what we said. At well, all. hold on. We, okay. got, we, got, we had a little nasty here. We were just kind of right. sitting there going like, WTF, but whatever. 
And then we get a tweet that Terry Whitehead at the 9.30 CHML News said, yes. Bob Bertina yes. has, now you're waking up, eh, Bob? Yeah, we, Bob Bertina, have a few more pints. <laughs> they were like, Bob, <laughs> they were like, Terry Whitehead said on CHML that Bob Bertina has the makings of one of the best mayors of Hamilton. And we're like, I, I, I've seen, you know, a 180 in PR before, but we almost fell off our chairs, incredulous. Oh, I know. I had a few counselors that said the same thing well, to me. What were you thinking? It well, came across as so BSy. We could barely take no, it. No, and I've, actually, I've told Bob this uh, a number of months ago. Actually, after he got elected, he's got the skill sets. Let's not get it wrong. He he he's a he's a he knows a lot of history in the, in the city of Hamilton. Should be a great communicator. He's a great communicator and, and should be. And well, he is. He's a, he can be a very good On radio. city. So my point yeah. is, he's got all the skill sets. And that's what I said. If you really listen to the quote. He has the skill to be one of the greatest mayors in the but community. But you just censured it's how you, it's how you exercise this skill. But you well, just censured him two hours earlier, and now you're going out like you guys are on the board. Well, what 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 surprised? <laughs> like, what what the fuck? Nice yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what the what surprised the, the council and and myself, quite frankly, because you know Bob can be really belligerent, and he doesn't apologize for anything at any mm. time. No. Period. May have Everyone knows that. that okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, guess what? In this discussion, he said uh, that he made mistakes and but that he, did he that would. But he two months earlier. And no, then he, no, and no, then he no, 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 no. He it said back. he said that he would work harder. No, and we had a, in camera. His quote was the too. best. He said, "Think about how good I'm going to be in my next term." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was no, a great. All quote. I'm saying is that he 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 staved off censure earlier. He apologized. You guys were okay with that, and then in that missive ill-advised missive he wrote to the Spectator's editorial board. He suggested he was taking that back. You guys decided that was worthy of censure. And all I'm saying is that even if you guys decided it's time for some kumbaya, which I'm all for, an hour and a half later, you're on the radio saying is the makings of Vic Cops Part 2. And we were sitting there going, oh, that's what I, I know, the makings of one of the best mayors of the city. But honestly, Terry, we're sitting there going, how do you go from censure to an hour and a half later having one of your chief critics saying that you could be the best mayor the city's seen? Creative editing at CHML? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Borg-like yeah, let's, let's messaging be control? Let, I don't know. Let's be clear what the, the quote was. Okay. And the quote was, he has the skills. They could be the best. But don't you mayor think that's a hand. little bit of schmarmy semantics? Well, I think the fact that he uh, and, I, and we all felt the same way uh, stood up to the plate okay. uh, with council after the censor and said that he uh, heard the council loud and clear, and that uh, and, and by the way, uh, we all felt the same thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. This uh, the comments he made was sincere. Uh, heartfelt yeah. and a hell of a lot deeper than he made the, the time before okay. when okay. we were considering this answer. Creepy, answered. creepy meeting. So, so, it was a creepy so, meeting. So I just want to make it clear when, when you have that sense of true sincerity from the mayor okay. for the first time, you need to give him the benefit of the I doubt. Know. We want him to be part of this council. We want him to lead. We so, want Terry, him to be a good here, mayor. Here and how else do you encourage that okay. by saying, we're prepared to give you that saying opportunity? Saying we're prepared to give you the opportunity based on your sincerity. And then to, uh, he is the making of one of the best mayors of the city, seemed to us to be a leap. It really did. But OK, you've explained that. You've given us the full context. And here, here to the fact that you felt he was being sincere. But you're the one who said 10 minutes ago that he's kind of been MIA. You don't see much of him. So since that sincere, I'm going to be a, you know, a different team player, whatever. Has he shown you in any real capacity that that's the case? I think that, uh, let's look at it. I mean, our, our, the, yeah. the mayor we have right now uh, was a radio guy for, what, 45 years? Yeah. And 45 years, he got to press a button when he didn't like what he heard. Right. 45 years, he got to dictate his agenda. <laughs> Where's my button? And, uh, uh. and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and 45 years, he did he he, he did emceeing. He went around, and right. he had the notoriety and the popularity. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, he's the mayor of, of a city council, and he's yeah, got to work with Terry, the team. Terry, he has not stopped hitting buttons, buddy. Well, well that's my point. Uh, and I think, and my my point, I call it. The, there's, there's, somebody gave me this analogy, and I thought it was brilliant. And uh, the guy that stars as Jesus Christ Superstar, he d he's done it for all these years. Uh, mm. like, what's the actor's name? Jesus? Yeah. Well, in fact, <laughs> in fact they, they, pe people will tell you that you can't distinguish who he is from, from what, uh, the... the, the uh, Ted Neely. G that's it. Thank or, you. Or, or Jesus. Right. Be They've been what? Now he's yeah, 70 he's, years old. Because he's been doing it for so long. So my point... So that's your analogy so on, my point, on Bob. Bob has been doing radio so long 
that he really hasn't been able to yeah. uh, shift from that. So, no, no, let me interrupt your analogy. Bob was on radio so long he thinks he's Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> That's, you're welcome, Lauren. I do, like I said, I owed you one. <laughs> I, I did like that. <laughs> Lauren's summary of Terry's commentary was that Bertina's been on radio so long he thinks he's Jesus. Hey, Ted Neely. Ted Neely has been playing Jesus and Jesus Christ Superstar for 40 years, like the mayor was on radio for 40 plus years. Well, Jesus of radio would be Marconi, right? So no that's one is uh, saying that no one is no one is saying that the mayor thinks he's Jesus. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm saying that for the record. I think the mayor is uh, struggling to find his identity as a mayor. Quite it's frankly, it's difficult to go from. I mean, I made the comment to you. How do you go from rock band promoter, which has got to be a fun job, to being in the bowels of a, of council, which is a tough job? Imagine going through 45 years of being the star of being universally loved and appreciated, of having, as you said, editing control to a certain extent, a lot of power, a lot of accolades, not a lot of accountability. He had a lot of opinions on things, opinions that people appreciated about the city and trains and stuff. Um, but to turn that love of the city into an active elected official's role, where suddenly the scrutiny meter gets turned way up, has got to be a really tough transition for him. And, you know, I don't think that if you look at other people like Bill Kelly and, and a few others who have done that leap from media in, none had the pedigree of Bertina or the, and then some people would suggest, you know, it was Larry who said that he ran a Seinfeld campaign. It wasn't about a lot other than his charisma and his and likability. So, you know, he sails in with a pretty big mandate, with a, with a strong sense of purpose. And I kind of got on that night that you meant that same thing that we've all said, when you love the city and you have the history that Bob Bertina has, when you have the capacity for communications that he clearly has, um, there's no reason why, and the likability factor, the, the common touch, when you have all of that, there's no reason he can't be a great mayor. Absolutely. And I think that's what you were saying. Well, it was The timing of it for us was almost and, unbearable. And, and, and that's but, fair, but I think uh, the healing needs to begin very quickly. Uh, so, but you're saying, you're the one who opened this up by saying he's kind of MIA. You're saying we're, we're getting along, we don't see much of Bob. Well, and, and my point is uh, perhaps he's taking a look at the council and say, okay, I'm going to need to uh, uh, approach this in a different way. And, and, and what he's doing, quite frankly, is he's not stepping on anyone's toes, which is actually a, a good news because we're yeah. able to collectively uh, work together and resolve some very difficult uh, issues and challenges. Uh, uh, but is he leading? Uh, no, but does the mayor need, need always lead? Well, I'm asking you. Uh, I mean, you've been there well, a I long think, time. I think you can have different uh, styles, and maybe uh, the style of this mayor is to, uh, to be the, the person that delivers the message. Uh, be the communicator. That? I think he is. I think okay. uh, he's getting out to many of the uh, different organizations and telling the good news story that I to told a little earlier. And I think he does a very good job at it, quite good. frankly. So uh, I think he has a role to play. He is the lead spokesperson. And he's a person that still interacts with the other levels of government and uh, is a key person dealing with businesses as they come into the community. And that's why, as the word aid counselor, I will not be running for mayor next time. I was about to get to that. You're stealing my thunder. I'm sorry. So, okay. So let's suppose that he, there. let's suppose, I'm letting him do his spiel. We've mocked him since he sat down. He gets his spiel. Oh, but I, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Are you going to be my campaign manager? Yes, sir. <laughs> <It's only here>. <laughs> 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 oh, that's Lauren's real agenda. There's always an agenda. I'm not uh, sure you can afford me, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, actually, I saw it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, Terry, any ambitions along that line? Uh, well, the, the old uh, saying is keep your cards close to your chest uh, when it comes to... Uh, so that's a yes? W whatever your future ambitions are. Well, I mean, is that not a yes, everybody? We have a lawyer. Jasper, aren't you a lawyer? Only if they take that out. Well, I mean, I mean there's, there, there's great positions that serve the city, and it could be in many different capacities, whether it's mayor, MP, MPP. Oh, uh, so, he's making the leap. So the, 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 reali the reality is, is that... Uh, but I really enjoy what I do now. Uh, yeah. I really have a relationship with the community. Um, but you can, you, can, you can leverage that, extend that, better complete and fulfill that by higher levels of office, right? I, I, I mean, as an MP, can. you can do a lot more for the mountain than you can a as a councillor. 
I'm not partisan. partisan. Again. Look Come at you. on. Oh, you're totally liberal. You work for Sheila Cobbs, for God's sake. No, no, but he worked yeah, for Gustafsson, worked for Morrow as a conservative. I know, Morrow but you have to be stamped with a red stamp to work for Sheila. There's no way I've you been could... really working hard to keep you confused, and I hope I did a, had a slice of I haven't, of I haven't news, been so. that interested. Well, every Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Every Tuesday night. <laughs> Council's on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday night. Ah. Uh, it was a good joke. Oh. Now, the, the reality is, is I made it clear when I ran as a, a councillor that, uh, that the partisan uh, politics goes out the window. So you're and, not liberal? Uh, right now, I'm not going to suggest any. Uh, do I have leanings? Yeah, I have liberal leanings. If that's what you're okay. looking for, absolutely. But you've endorsed NDP in the but past. But I'm looking for who's well, courting you for Lauren, higher office. It's funny Lauren asked that. You, we were talking about the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And one of the things my... Uh, uh, especially growing up in a small community, was it wasn't always about partisan politics; it was about individuals. Yes. And one See thing, Lauren? and one thing I uh, was taught is that uh, you know that was just part of the equation. But take a look at the individuals going to represent your community and the values, and make a determination uh, so on the individual. what's your problem with Sophia? Not necessarily the party. He has a problem with Sophia. Yeah. None. What's your problem with Sophia? Absolutely none. You walked into the Sophia love nest here. We love Sophia. She's one of my BFFs. Absolutely. What's wrong none. with Sophia? None. No, no problem, Sophia. Okay, well, well, are you planting seeds again, Lauren? I won't push that issue. Yeah. What's, he, what's his problem with Sophia? You can't bring that shit up and not tell me. What's wrong? Yeah. It's, yeah, Lauren. It's my yeah. understanding that in the last provincial you weren't uh, an active liberal. I wasn't an active uh, liberal. I wasn't an active NDP, or, nor was an active conservative. So that doesn't mean he has a problem with Sophia as a person. Okay. He just wasn't working for the party. Wasn't working for any party. So I find that interesting because I just always assumed working for Sheila Copps, you had to have somehow been dyed red at some point. She's as hyperpartisan as anyone I've ever seen, right? Yeah. To, she's yeah. done very well with that, but I didn't think you could work for her and not be a liberal. And I honestly thought Mora was a liberal, but I guess I was wrong. No, no, later in life. Break okay. it down, though, Terry. How long were you with Christofferson? How long with Morrow? How long? Uh, well, Christofferson, almost five years. Because uh, that's how long Bob Ray was in government, yeah. and then uh, moved into Bob's office, and I think I, I believe Bob was like f probably two terms, so that's almost six years. So you're being courted for higher office, and then uh, right? and then obviously with um, Sheila for how with long? Sheila for uh, probably that was the shortest time, maybe three years. You whore. <laughs> yeah, you're saying well, whore. Uh, uh, well, let's be clear, though, and I, I want to make clear. Other <laughs> Your than, last house just got uh, ambushed with rocks. Than, other than the, the first job I had in Hamilton was with, with Dave Christofferson, hmm. um, Bob Morrill's office knocked on my door. Really? Sheila Cops knocked on my door. And I think uh, they wanted an individual that uh, had a good understanding of the community, mm -hmm. um, had uh, strong networks in the community, and were, was a community builder, which was my reputation at the time. And uh, and they so that they weren't looking for partisan when they hired me. They Jerry, were looking for an individual that could do the job. Can you bridge the gap? How do you become Elliot Lake concert promoter to Christopherson? Oh, no, we're trying. I'm trying to make like, that leap to. Where, how'd you go from? How'd you the get rock, to Hamilton? The rock guy great, to the Hamilton guy. Question. Well, what happened was uh, uh, again I was working at uh, Rio Algum and I was the vice president and briefing chairman of the steelworkers. And the mines were closing down. Uh, I see. And, uh, and I had an the NDP. And I had yeah. an op and I had an opportunity to. It was office and technical union. So the union I, I was involved with uh, was with the, you know the geologists, the you know all the professional uh, yeah. people in the in the organization because you had the hourly and the office office and tech. And um, so the mines were closing. I had super seniority, and I decided uh, at the time that uh, there's people that had a lot more invested in the community than I did in the context of homes and families and so forth. So I decided not to exercise my, my seniority, or sorry, my um, status as a, a, a vice president of the, of the uh, union and, uh, and step down so that other people could take the position and hold on to a job. Uh, at the same time, uh, Bob Ray just got elected. Mm. Uh, and uh, and at th that time I was asked, first, first campaign I ever worked on, really? uh, a partisan campaign I ever worked on. And uh, they asked me if I ever, if I want to work anywhere. And I said, well, look, I'd love to, uh, my mom and dad were from Hamilton, met in Hamilton. I got this, I had a friend that was a Crown Attorney here in Hamilton at the time. I loved to settle in Hamilton. They Jasper? Said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, Are you Crown Attorney? I didn't Jasper know. wasn't here at the time. And then, uh, so I uh, had my resume circulated and I know that Richard Allen and uh, Bob McKenzie and, and David Christofferson, and I did a lot of research on the three and I, was really impressed with Dave Gustafson at the time because he came across to me as an individual that wasn't as partisan, was pragmatic in his approach. What? At that time. <laughs> at that time. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I was impressed because, uh, I mean, I read, read uh, a lot of uh, the articles from the Spectator and the archives, and uh, I was impressed with what he did on council. Mm -hmm. And 
I was interviewed and uh, Dave ended up calling me and asked me if I wanted the job. And one well, of the things he said, the reason why I want to hire you is because, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, uh, that I didn't have any baggage, NDP baggage, because I was new to the, the party. Right, yeah. And he wanted to have a fresh face and I was the fresh face at the time. Why are you afraid to say that? It seems like a... Well, I, I just don't want to be uh, dispurging you want, anybody. You don't want Andrea frankly. to come after you? <laughs> She's got no, power no. now, Lord, I'm telling you. I, I wouldn't want to be beaten with her ND penis. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry about that, Terry. Have you been holding that all night? <laughs> <laughs> Not hers. All night to use that. Well, well, all night right. since last week when yeah. she negotiated the deal. I, I, actually, actually, I met Andrea long before, you know, when she was in a, a working with the, uh, the legal clinic. And I, I was, I, she was a community builder, and yeah. I was impressed with her then. She's impressive. And I had a short stint with her on council. Uh, I was pressed with her then. Yeah. Uh, I just saw her grow in that position. So when did you come again, in? 2003? Back to my original point. I don't necessarily have to look at the party. Sometimes you need to look at the individual. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. every day, if I was living in Andrew Horvath's riding, it's not about liberal or conservative or NDP to me. It's about the individual. I think yeah. she is a, an individual I, I could support any time. I think she'll time. run the province someday. I think she's got that kind of, I do. I think she's got that kind of hutzpah. I do. I do. And back to why Deirdre would be upset by me using the P word, it's because in her lyric cast, when I said something about having balls, she said, no, Lord, it's having a vagina. She, she did not like my objectification of women by my terminology. That's why I made that comment. I think that Andrea is formidable. <laughs> And I think that I'm like you, I'm not partisan. It's about the person. If you have a natural leader, nat uh, somebody who's naturally committed to the community and has the savvy and the hard work ethic to pull it off, they can go anywhere. So where are you gonna go? Cause you're clearly being courted at other levels or you have your ambitions set there. Cause you're the one who I said, well, you run for mayor and you said, well, there's MP and MPP. So it's on your radar. Where do you wanna be? Where, where can you have the most impact? <laughs> oh. No, I, I, uh, I, I certainly, um we know let's you let's, let's say that uh, that I enjoy what I do. Yeah. I hope to continue for a longer period of time, not necessarily in the position I am in today. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and as far as as far as moving forward, I'm I'm what not that sure. Term I'm called? not I'm not sure where where where, where I'll be. Uh, but when I uh, make that decision, I'll be sure to let you know. Yeah, but that wasn't the answer I was looking for. What I'm I looking know it for wasn't. is that is that there's you know people ask Lauren and I because we're in the public sphere in our own little caddy way. They ask us, where, where do we want to be? Jasper just came over and asked me, when am I going to get in the arena? Never. Um, but you have to always think about it, right? You think, does you said to yourself that you're not partisan. I look at the upper levels of government, whether you're at Queen's Park or whether you're in Ottawa, you have to toe the party line. The freedom you have as a councillor to speak as an individual without partisan influence, unduly uh, influencing your decisions, it's not something you'll, you'll have. So how can you go from the values that you have to working at those levels? You know, that's, that is a great, great question. Uh, somebody asked me, how come you ran for council and didn't run for MPP mm -hmm. or MP uh, uh, you know, a lot earlier? And I said, you know, when I was a staff person, I got the, the, uh, the, the privilege and the honor to uh, work for great MPs mm -hmm. and MPPs, but, you know, both the NDP, the provincial level, and, and uh, liberal at the federal level. And the biggest thing that I had a challenge with was towing the party yeah, line, of and uh, and I thought, well, as a counselor, I mean, you asked me about, you know, what, yeah. and I said I'm nonpartisan. I love the 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 council role because I'm not answerable to any party. Right. I'm answerable to myself, and I've fallen a sword to be my own sword. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll pay my own price, but I'm not going to pay a price for someone else. Yeah. And it's a privilege. But I also to be in. understand, as as a guy that worked at that level and was loyal to those people I served, the discipline you need to have to serve mm -hmm. in those roles. I but appreciate would you want it. it? Why would you I understand want to do it? it. Well, again, uh, if I was looking at uh, um, what is taking place in the uh, Mental Health Act or yeah. dealing with, uh, you know, autistic children, yeah. where would uh, and what role uh, could I find myself in that would mostly affect those mm -hmm. areas? And uh, yeah. so they're, you're going to be playing in the province. They're, so. they're higher levels. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, well, and there's also mayor. You can't affect healthcare like you that. You do that through a different but uh, vehicle. It's a different, absolutely. You've got a different venue there, and um, you didn't say no to our question about Terry 2014. 
You're going to start the campaign, Lauren? You're going to run for him? As soon as the check clears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, to- Lauren doesn't officially run campaigns. Right. He just happens to put signs up in the middle of the night and nobody knows, right, Martinez? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one that. knows that Lauren is putting a sign he, up in the middle. No, Come on. No. To- Come on. A quick little story because it's worth two lair casts. Martinez, the first time you met Lauren on the campaign trail, you got to hear this, Terry. You're going to love it. Will you share it with us? Oh, that, that little anecdote from your, uh, you got to come to the mic though. At Augusta House. Or my, yeah. yeah, tell us that little story because <coughs> it's worth two layer casts to have this in. Yeah. No, I was, uh, I was about to, well, I, I just declared actually for Ward 2 and I had, uh, I was ready to take on Bob at the time. Mm-hmm. And so myself and a few of my campaign team were at Augusta House for an evening and so we're just kind of, you know, we're all in our suits and our ties and we're ready to start, you know, pressing flesh and and uh, why, someone, someone comes up to me and says, hey, Lauren Lieberman's on the front patio. He wants to talk to you. Okay. You know, I've, I know Lauren Lieberman. So walk down. He's standing there. It's hot. It's starting to rain. And standing under an umbrella is Lauren Lieberman with a smoke in, his, in one hand and a drink in the other. And I walk up to him. No. I'm painting the picture, Lauren. I walk up to him and he's like, so, you're running for office. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, word two. He's like, you're going to lose. <laughs> like, well, gee, gee, thanks. Thanks, Lauren. That's, uh, that's really super there. Um, so, anything good to say? But no, he showed me. Lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. So, to make Lauren proud, I lost. <laughs> Crystal ball. What else do you see, Lauren? So do you, this, here's, this is why I asked Martinez to share us that painful story. Is because if you want him to be a campaign manager, you have to understand his tactics, which is to root out all the competition, walk up to them, and tell them their fate. And that's not entirely fair, as Bob hadn't declared for mayor yet. So at at the time, Martinez was going to get slaughtered by Bertina. We okay. didn't know he was going to get beaten by jelly and <laughs> and far yet. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lauren, for your but, kindness. No, you won an honorable bronze medal. You want you ran a respectable campaign. I like the Canadians at the Olympics. I'm just happy we're here. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We're happy. We're happy you ran, <laughs> Martinez. So, Terry, just I'm just saying, beware if Lauren's your campaign manager. Um, thank you for the warning. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for coming in the lair. You I didn't owe me anything lose. by the fight you had with Lauren because this is not his show. No. But you know, if Lauren wants to, we bring, have no issues. Well, I'm just saying. He said he would do the lair cast. My because only of issue your is I hear nonpartisan, and what I hear mm-hmm. is I believe in nothing. Yeah. But other than that, I've so got no problems. You don't believe with anything that. he said. No, that I have no convictions is what I'm nonpartisan. We know you have no well, convictions. Yeah. Do you have values? He has none of those. Not me. You're the one who's nonpartisan. I'm partisan. <laughs> this is why you kind of want him as your cat. He has no convictions or values. <laughs> right? Am I wrong? misinterpreted. <laughs> Actually, uh, Laura, I, I really enjoyed this opportunity. And, you like uh, the lyric cast? Well, I love it. And I think that uh, it's a great medium. Uh, it's an opportunity to be comfortable uh, in this yeah. setting. Uh, open up and tell a story that uh, may not be told or, or have an opportunity to tell Great. in any other uh, medium or, or opportunity. So I really uh, enjoyed uh, this opportunity. Well, you know what? You're, you're a champ for saying that because there's like, I don't know how many people here are staring at you. Some of them you don't know. There's cameras going off nonstop from Urbanicity and from the Laircast. Um, but we don't edit. So whatever we happen to say, most of the time we shouldn't say. Please it's ill-advised. Please take my comment about Deirdre out. Yeah. Edit that, please. <laughs> Do you know, after, after Deirdre's lyric cast, she said to me, please edit out the F-bombs. And I said, we don't really edit ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to have to deal with Deirdre. Deirdre, get him. Um, but you know what? That's the reason we created this, right? Is because there, there's not a lot of opportunity to have, to get to know somebody yeah. without time constraints or agendas. We have no sponsors or advertisers. We really don't care. Um, we, we just want to understand who you are. You're an interesting guy. More interesting after the Laircast, i got to be honest with you. I had you pigeonholed a certain way, um, just as some people would have me or, Le- or Lauren pigeonholed. But when you get to know somebody, you get to know a deeper side of them, right? And I hadn't understood all your motivations or your background. And, uh, you know, I'll watch your work differently now. Well, and I think the, the other thing that's really important for people to understand is that I can be provocative, but I do it by design. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to really flush out the arguments, uh, if, you know, from the deepest core. I want to hear what mm-hmm. those arguments are, and then uh, either we'll agree with them or, or, or take them. So, on. what can feel like obfuscating from us as the casual observer is your methodology. 
Yes. And there's a there's a methodology behind what seems like madness. Absolutely. Any questions to our good counselor? You like how I slid that in? Any count, any questions to our good counselor before we let him out of the lair chair? Term limits. <laughs> Someone keeps coughing term limits. Terry, how do you yeah, feel about well, that? Yeah, I, I wrote a, I thought a nice uh, little piece uh, in the Hamiltonian on, on term limits and uh, and I sort of took, a, I got some scars after that uh, what did particular you say? call. Well, I was being tongue in cheek and provocative. Which, That's which the second I can't. time a tongue in cheek has not worked for you. It's not working people, very well for me. I don't think people get it. I, I might don't have think to. That's your shtick. I might have to find another uh, don't method. Don't try to be Lauren. But You're not I, Lauren. I uh, you know, one of the questions I put to, to, to an individual is that, uh, you know, first of all, it doesn't exist in Canada. Mm. Uh, we got our own value system here in Canada. But secondly, um, how do you how do you expect a counselor to perform, or how do people expect counselor to perform? How do you measure a performance of a counselor yeah. in their last term of counsel, knowing full well that hey, four years I'm gone, I can't run again. Yeah. How do you get optimum performance from a counsel in those four years? See, but I think the opposite is true. I think when you take off the shackles of a re-election campaign, and actually work by your convictions and work by your values, you'll do better. I really feel that that's the truth. When you're positioning yourself as a counselor for your future employment, when you're not running again. Yeah, but that's just... You can fill in the blanks but that's as to which again, politicians but that's, I'm referring but that's, to. I know, Larry, but that's just self... Who are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> well, that's my, that's my go-to response. Larry just left an hour ago. That's my go-to response. Sorry, Larry, but what I'm saying... <laughs> Sorry, Larry who? Yeah. Uh, Grossman? But, but what I'm saying is that I would think that when you're not running again, you're able to actually say, you know what, because reemployment is not my prime objective, I can do what I think is, is the appropriate, risky, tough decision. And, and I'm not I, working for a job, I'm working for my constituents. And I, and I love, I love the, uh, the, 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 your thought process around that, and I wish that, uh, that that could be what really takes place, but to suggest that, uh, uh, that a counselor that runs uh, works hard in the first four years and say, well, the next four years I can take a bit of a holiday and I'm going to have to work as hard and I can be a little more provocative, I hear you. But I don't know if you really, uh, without ha having them tested and, 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 and having them, the performance measured in the context of an election in those last four years, if you're going to get the type of performance you, 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 you want. You know, I take I a look at... it's a character thing, because well, I'm not saying you're going to work less hard. Well, I'm saying you're going to work less hard at getting your job back. You're going to work harder at the actual issues of the... Well, well in some cases, I think that's true. I think in many cases you're not, and then you're going to stuck with a dud, a dud for four years. So, right? That's a risk. So that's the risk you take. And but the other, you know the dud's gone yeah. at the end of those four years with some of you guys. <laughs> you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna retire before some of well, you are off council. And, and the other, the other, the other <laughs> argument. Just saying. The other, the other argument I put in. I thought it was over. Anyway, the, uh, the other it argument. It never ends in the lair. The, the, <laughs> the other argument I put forward uh, is that, um, you know, there was a period of time uh, when you know Doug Lychek came in, mm -hmm. and uh, and you saw a lot of senior managers go. Rock and, uh, rocky times. Yes, yeah, very rocky times where the bureaucracy appeared to be in control and the yeah. council uh, uh, what, was was yeah. was being dictated to. And yeah. uh, and I really believe that if you lose some of the corporate memory and experience then who is really running the city and everyone mm -hmm. knows that the bureaucracy is a pretty powerful thing and they yeah. got the corporate memory, they got the experience and if you don't have counselors that can really challenge the status quo or that, uh, that bureaucracy to perform. But you don't need 12 years oh, no, three terms to do that Terry, you can do it in eight. Like I'm just saying you don't need to be lifers to challenge the bureaucracy. That's correct, I'm just giving you yet another argument but I think the other one of course is that uh, uh, small town uh, Ontario. I mean, this is a macro thing when you talk mm. about term limits. You can't apply it just to Hamilton. You would have to apply it across. Yeah, it's a change in the municipal you would have as a municipal yeah, act. But do you, under, do you understand the principle underlying well, let, the, let, the cough? Let, let me let me finish this okay. though. Yeah. There's many communities. I came from a small community in northern Ontario. Mm -hmm. They struggle to find candidates even to run, right. to take the position. And now you're going to put another, uh, impose something else on these small uh, communities and say, oh, by the way, you've got to have term limits. And so the, big, the biggest struggle, and I think there's why, why, one of the reasons why there's been some resistance, uh, if you take a look across small town Ontario, take a look at how many mayors have been there for mm -hmm. uh, almost eternity. Mm -hmm. It's because they can't find another mayor to replace them. Okay, so can I respond? Because I've listened. Um, the, argument, the argument that you're saying to control the entrenched bureaucracy, you need a counselor who's not a newbie, someone who's got as much entrenchment so they can see the games that bureaucracy is playing. 
I get that, but you can figure that out in a couple of years if you're on the ball. The argument that if we change the Municipal Act, it's going to impose an unfair standard on these small towns where civic engagement is at a low ebb, that's all kind and good and very macro of you. But what people are asking for, and, and you're, you're the one who coughed back there, yeah. so you stand up for it. What they're saying is, okay, don't impose these province-wide arbitrary eight-year term limits. We're not the U.S. presidency. Don't do it. But get the hell off council once you've done your job. Why life her there? Why stay forever? Why use the rules of incumbency to get I, reelected? I, I think there's a whole group that just cannot be beat. There's a machine that's yeah, working exactly. right now to keep people... No, they're that good at getting reelected. They're not that that's good at their the job. job. No, no, but that's the problem. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. First of all, I mean, there's a premise here. And the premise is, uh, and, and, and as a politician, it, is how I look at it. People are always right. If I get unelected, I'm not going to be critical of the people. They made a choice based on my performance. Right. So it works both ways. Yeah, but incumbency, so, you know the, the voter rates are so low take, in municipal take, elections. But take a look at the, 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 the take a look at the percentage that councillors are winning at. So even if you took that argument, which I don't buy, that you got a 20% advantage, most of the councils have won, won over 60% 60, 60 of the vote. So you can't even but use that as an argument. But you honestly think that after three terms of office, you can bring as much innovation and excitement and contribution as somebody new? Any, any other job? client of yours in your consulting business. You've had them for too many years, let somebody Three else. Three years max, I move on. Well, that's your choice. Because, no, but, but it's, because, it's because I understand that, you know what, there are fresh ideas my client deserves but, to hear. Look, when look, you guys stay look, for 16 but, years, but it's painful. Measure, who, who should measure that? But I do by my own accountability. Fair I don't enough. have to leave. But, no, I but, do because it's in the best but, interest of my client. But my point is, who should measure that? And the people are always right. They have an opportunity to go to the poll. They have an opportunity to, to, yeah. to select their candidate. And that is the system that we have, and it's a system that our forefathers fought for. So let for. me use that democracy so here, just so, for so, a second. Well, here, let me okay. finish that, that, yeah, yeah. that thought. So uh, the question is, the, the underlining pin for democracy mm -hmm. is the right to choose, mm -hmm. to choose. If you start restricting choice, do you truly still have a okay. democracy? So you're saying it's anti-democratic to impose term limits. So let me just go for, you, you know I do this periodically, guys. I got to pull the studio audience. Who in this room thinks that a Hamilton councillor should have the democratic right to sit there in perpetuity without any kind of impetus to leave when they're no longer doing good? And who thinks term limits? So put your hands up if you think councillors should just go with the flow as long as they can keep the gig? Hands up. the stupid electorate. One, yes. two, three. Okay, who thinks that term limits might be a helpful solution? I'd like to see term limits. Hams up. Hey guys, you're not voting. Susan, Rich, we're doing a, a term limit versus council staying until they grow old argument. Are you for term limits? Three, three terms max. Okay, so your term limits. What about you, Tech? Term limits, Susan? She can't say she's... That girl sitting there who's not Susan Claremont <laughs> from The Spectator. Do you want to wave? Not first? Okay, so she's on. Mike, what about you? No. Not term limits? No? Dave? Lauren? No term limits. No. Aaron? No? Reg? Two. Two? So I would say that you're the, the slight majority here is that you guys should just do the thing and people get to vote you out. And some a, a fair group in here, maybe 40%, thinks that term limits are the way to go. But I think the underlying issue, Terry, is just that um, it seems as though the incumbents have a shoe in to the job. And unless well, a ward opens up, there's no change. First of all, uh, in, in city council, let's get the numbers right. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2001, over two thirds of the council has turned over. Hmm. People don't talk about that. No, they let's don't. how many mayors, uh, how many terms have the mayors lasted since there 2001? Uh, and then we're talking incumbents, they went down. Uh, when I ran, I, the first time I ran, I ran against uh, 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 Jamie West. Mm -hmm. And Jamie West was a TV guy at the time and went he to radio. He incumbent, though. But he had name recognition. Sure. Right. Yeah, and that's the argument. Yeah. He had name recognition. I had to take, overcome the name recognition, and I won. Barely, but I won. Mm -hmm. And I worked hard, damn yeah. hard. So the second time, I ran against a guy that never won, lost an election, ever, in the context of municipal politics. And that was Frank D'Amico, who was the former incumbent right. for the area. Right. So it was like me running against an incumbent. And I had to work my ass off again, and well, you've made I won. A compelling argument. So was, was that, I just want to know: is that a... was that two thirds turnover? People who lost, or people who didn't take the job again? No, 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 no. lost elsewhere. Right. No, no. no. Term, the, the turnover hasn't been in terms of beating them. It has been people who jumped, 
and losses or retirees. and retirees. Yeah. Yeah. So, so really, unseating the incumbent by your stat isn't really accurate. No one's unseated those people. They've left. Well, as many lo have lost. Dave well. Mitchell lost as an incumbent. Yeah, that's true. It happens. So you know what, Terry? You've made a compelling argument that we should keep you guys in on merit, and every four years we get to vote either way. Term limit seems like an artifice to impose. Um, and as long as you're conscious of the underlying concern, which is entrenchment and, and advantage and lack of productivity. And, and there's a secret behind that. Oh, and one so, more secret, everybody, from so Terry the, Whitehead. The, the se secret number two. The last was the, well, the secret, Polish secret. general. My, my advice is, and, I, and I've seen it, we've got a couple of great candidates in this room, quite we frankly. We do, yeah. Who? Uh, Martinez. Martinez being Lauren. one. And I want to say to each and every one of them that uh, the challenges in, in, a, in a, taking an incumbent on, because yeah. I've watched politics a long time, is one, get engaged early in everything you can in regards to the community and show your colors and have a, build your resume. Once you've built your resume and show that you got the bad ones and the scars, then you establish those relationships with uh, key uh, players in the, in the, in the community mm -hmm. and then you, you establish that relationship and then you work your butt off and get to every door and tell people you're selling yourself and you got to sell what your values are, what you're standing for, and you better be good at it. Because if you're not good at it, you're not going to get elected. So let's and end people on. that get elected are the ones that are good at it. So let's end on, what are your values? My values? Yeah. Uh, one is that uh, I, I like to fight for the small guy. I hate to see, uh, uh, I, I, I hate anyone to be taken advantage of. Values, uh, I mean, that's such a broad. Well, you just said, you yeah. gotta tell them at the door what well, your values are. Well, when I talk about values are, so values are uh, uh, understanding that taxes are important to people. Yeah. I think that's a value in regards to uh, 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 the uh, building an economy. Yeah. I think that's important, uh, a value, and uh, that's one of the values that I have. Uh, we have a significant social issue in the city of Hamilton mm -hmm. with poverty, mm -hmm. and I think that's a significant value uh, and, and an issue and a, and a component that you got to talk to people and educate people and create awareness. I think there's so many of them. Uh, Do you like being you a counselor? You choose the ones that you feel that you have strength, yeah. and then you convince people that you will take that message and you will deliver when you get to council. You take a look at the short time in, in council that I've been there. Uh, you know. I started the, the, the wireless program in, in the city of Hamilton, downtown. Yeah, the downtown. Wi-Fi, thanks for that. Yeah. I initiated, I initiated the, the small business. Yeah, Wi-Fi, the, 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 thumbs the business, up. The business ambassador program. Yeah. I initiated uh, and lobbied all the way through the federal government, the national uh, government for the creation of the Southern Ontario Economic Development Agency. So when people say, uh, you know, measure performance, I think people are. I think with, that's why I got the a... exception a, of Pasuda, who ran uncontested, yeah. Terry had the largest mandate. So you know what, Terry? Greg? Um, yes, the large not even crowd close. in the city. You know, my, my, my appreciation for your work and your passion and your motivation has gone up tremendously because you've been a good sport. Hasn't he been a good sport, guys? I mean, he, he, was off, he was off the hook. He was off the hook, and then we got into the deep stuff. Um, What's that? No he said no epic meltdown. <laughs> it's because he didn't drink his wine. <laughs> he had some wine earlier. Right. He, he was nice and relaxed. Um, no, but you've been a good sport. I you've let us it. challenge you, and you've also been candid. And I appreciate it. I'm glad you asked to be in the lair. It was more fun than I thought it would be. I had somebody say, God, not a... Uh, no, no, truly, come on. <laughs> it means that your image of a rock promoter is not your current image. And, and I had somebody else on a production team go, not another counselor. <laughs> What's that? This is me being nice. No, he didn't. He did. <laughs> That's what I... Terry, what are counselor parties like when you all get together? Ooh, see... Okay, first of all, is that with it? <laughs> is that with or without the mayor? Because it doesn't sound like he goes. What, what, what happens? What, what do they say? What Susan happens asked, in Vegas stays in Vegas? Susan Claremont asked what happens when councillors get together and party. First of all, do you? Number two, number two is, is the mayor there? And number three, what happens? I, I can say that uh, uh, one is there, there's really, really <laughs> good relationships right across the table. We've talked about that. She Secondly, gets, you get the after, council, after council, after council, there's a number of us that. Uh, get to choose what ward we go to. Don't uh, you go to Bronzies and, and drink? Well, wh whatever. We pick the restaurant and we yeah. go there and, uh, and, and sort of unwind. Um, and no, we don't do city business, so uh, don't file your hundred dollars and, and and look into it. You think? Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do you want? You think, no, hold on, hold on. Boy, do you want to sit there for another hour? Oh shit! He opened this 
one up. So I'm not going to spend my I'm not going to spend my hundred dollars to launch an integrity complaint because I want to talk to the media about how I feel. Oh wait a second, you guys finally had the sanity today to take that down, right? You finally decided today. You know what? I don't always get it right either. Terry, that was such crazy shit that your whole you're not allowed to talk to the media if you file a complaint against counsel. Who thought that that was democratic? According to our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, remotely legal. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it, it's it wasn't a hill. I'm saying it wasn't a hill that I was going to die on. Good, because uh, it was a bad and, hill. Uh, well, I mean, but there was there was an individual, uh, uh, David Broom, who brought up uh, the, um, the complaint filed against police that there is rules and you can't go to the media and you can't talk to the media. So they already exist in the context of a process. Having said that. To me, I heard it pretty loud and clear from the community. I, I was interactive on the blogs. I, uh, I had a personal experience that maybe I was a little too close to the forest to see the tree, the trees uh, in the context of my daughter when uh, the complaint was filed against me. And, uh, and maybe uh, that clouded my, uh, um, you know, making a sober uh, second thought. Are you listening to this? Don't you love this? And, like we've got a city councilor here saying, maybe I was too close to it. Maybe I, was, I made a misjudgment. I can't always get it right. See, nobody's perfect, Terry, and, and I'm an armchair critic, and Lauren is too, um, but all you can ever ask is that somebody says, you know what, I was looking at this the wrong way, as I was with Charlton House, and I said that to Susan earlier, we make mistakes, Absolutely. you know, but if you can sit here and own up to it, I love that. Well, and it's I, awesome. And, and, the, and the other message I wanted to give people, and I, and I had this uh, with Mr. Martinez, uh, the discussion we're having is, I think it's so important to listen. Yeah. yeah. It's not just about able, be able to talk. And I, you know, I'm one of those guys that go to council, and and my mind isn't made up yet. And people well, ask Terry me. Terry said listening is important. Come and, back and pay attention. And the media, and the and the media will ask you, what's your position? What's your position? I said, look, I'm you know I'm leaning this way, but I'm staying open minded and I truly do. Yeah. And I go to council, I listen, and I always felt democracy was about art of debate, art of listening, and taking your life experiences uh, and the reports and everything you know, taking all that accumulated information and making an informed decision, and uh, and. If I was to suggest anyone that was running, I would hope that that's the type of people we bring to council are people that will stay open-minded right through the end and make the determination at council and on I the hope council the floor. Councillors who have had a nice long time running the city step aside so those people can come in. That's all I can ask for. Juan Peron on the art of the compromise. Wow, I don't know if that's true, but it sounded good. Terry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's all thank Terry Whitehead. Come on. <laughs> Chats in the Lair is a Power Group production. Visit us at powergroup.ca or laircast.com or check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.